Okay, so let's start part two uh, of this week lectures that we are covering multimedia communications and networks and focusing on services and protocols. And um, uh, to have the summary of the part one that what we discussed is you know, we talked about, we started with a home office setup, the internet, you know, or connection diagram, and uh, how to, you know, perform a communications between, you know, two devices. Then we describe some OSI layers with an example. And then we talk about, you know, some LAN techniques, uh, especially Ethernet techniques. And then we told that, you know, access networks, right, that how to access the internet, you know, from, uh, let's say, ISP, to our home office and there are different kinds of you know x network techniques for example dial up and then digital subscriber logic that is dsl and then we had you know hybrid coaxial cable networks and also lastly we discussed you know fiber to the home or fiber to the network so this was you know you know something some some overview in fact right so uh, now in the part two we'll be discussing something it will really starts with you know this network i mean internet technologies and protocols and uh, in the beginning uh, we'll be you know starting this one this network devices so the network devices you see uh, the very first one is this one that nic that network interface card and if you can understand or if you if you are familiar with you know that this is basically the lan card that we see in our personal computers and uh, then within with this LAN card, you know, there is interface. This interface basically we say, and, and this connector is you know RJ45 connectors. We connect you know um, you know this internet or for constructed the LAN, right? So this is a pretty same thing. And this card is more also we say Ethernet LAN card, and and it provides the functionality of you know physical layer and data link layer functionality. And also, you know, it is good to mention that these devices, I mean, this uh, network uh, interface card, this contains basically the MAC address and that, you know, medium access control address. And we, uh, this MAC address is basically unique to each devices. Wherever the devices you see in the world, and if it has internet connectivity, it definitely has some sort of MAC address. So this MAC address basically uniquely identified in the physical address of these devices this is unique okay so so this is you know similarly the network interface card it basically convert your, your bit byte information electrical signals and also in, in between there are some you know uh, in data link layers as i said you know, it's mac per mac you know the media access control that who you know who, who is you know will be who will be using the media for example our you know you know the network cable or something who will send the information so that you know kind of things can be also you know determined within this you know card and there are some other kinds of control for example flow control you know and, and some error control kind of stuffs also can be done and in our example that we gave you that you know in that example we, we told that you know you remember that they are you know will will provide some seal you know when the you know some information will be coming from the upper layers you know will provide the seal so that is basically the error correction or check some things stuffs are done over here so anyway this is the hello land cards you are familiar with then the next device is basically the repeater so by the way then we can we can say that this you know uh, this in radio interface in, in network interface card is basically our you know you know app layer one right we can say this is basically layer one or maybe layer two if we consider the osi model that's layer two layer one or layer two devices right so this is we can see in this manner now how about the repeater the repeater is a very simple devices for example here we have a network device and, and let's a computer and let's say we have another computer here and we like to you know connect these two but maybe the range between these two is larger okay but you know that there is a limitation that how how long signal can propagate through this where if it is you know beyond 100 meter 200 meter depending on the cable or, or where that we are using so uh, so that's the range so to extend that range we we need you know some repeater so repeater basically amplify the signal and then you know uh, the the range can be extended so that's the 
um, that's the you know uh, uh, function of a repeater so then you see the repeater also works in physical layer so you can say this is also layer one devices right the re repeater okay now how about you know the hub hub is very simple if you um, it is good uh, to describe in terms of this star topology for example this is our you know computer or let's say laptops or whatever so some devices which you know have you know some sort of you know this nic that is network interface card inside so it constitute you know um, it has the ability to 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 form a lan right now uh, let's say this uh, uh, workstation over here he wants to communicate with this one now definitely it will send the information here the data here and this hub you know definitely is, is connected to one one port right now this hub what you to do it these signals will be taking and then it will broadcast to everyone you know connected to this hub okay so that means this hub basically doesn't contain any sorts of intelligence so it it getting the information and or the data and then it basically broadcast that you know data to everywhere right on, on on this this hub so and then you know for example maybe these stations basically want to you know transmit with this workstation so then this workstation knows that okay this information is intended for me so only these stations you know accept this data and all other stations basically you know ignore that data because it basically doesn't need you know for them so that's the you know purpose of hub so hub in a in a sense it is basically you know providing in a very you know it's a kind of this kind of you know is connected everybody is connected to this hub and then they can communicate with each other definitely this is a we can say this is basically a, a LAN right so local area networks and still this local area network it just have this you know NIC at with EC stations and this hub right so this is the idea now we have you know let's say switch now so so then hub what is what is this you know uh, this uh, this uh, layer you can see if you if we consider the OSI layer or TCP IP you know layer we can think this hub is also basically the layer one devices okay so uh, in layer one or physical layer devices is then repeater one and this you know uh, re, uh, you know this hub is also layer one or application layer devices that that's the idea now how about the you know switch now switch you know it's it's interesting the switch is in not, not the intelligent but it has some intelligent design itself in, inside the Swiss, you know, for examples like that, you know, inside the Swiss, it, it has, you know, so it, it has, it has something like this kind of, let's say, you know, maybe design. So Swiss has many port, actually, let's say port 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, I don't know how much, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, something. I'm just, you know, saying, let's say this is 1. And let's say this is maybe 16, okay, port number 16. Now, with this port, maybe we have, you know, a, a computer connections over there now within this internally this switch is basically configured in this way that this one is connected to this 16 this one is also connected to this 15 this one is also connected to this one this one. so this is basically a massive connections inside also every port actually connected with every other port okay so in in this way so at the time for example let's say this pc which is connected to the port one and he likes to you know transmit the information onto the you know a computer connected to the port 16 so so it, it, it so there is some you know dedicated you know path for that so in this way we can basically you know reduce a lots of you know traffic flow or collisions you know of, of those kind of things so this is you know how this you know swiss works so that's why you know swiss looks you know a kind of you know you know messy and it also has you know lots of you know ports in you know, outsides okay now think about when comes the switch the switch basically you know of you know this switch that we are talking let's say this is you know kind of we can say this is layer two devices okay that's connects in the data link layer but then there are other switches you know that is also uh, there is another kind of switch that works in the network layer or we say layer three switches so when we mention something like you know network layer switches we say layer three switches not just switches 
when when we mean switch it means it is layer to a data link layer switches okay so this is a simple a descriptions on that now how about the bridge there is another device is the bridge the bridge basically divide a large network into a smaller segments okay so for example so bridge basically has let's say roughly has two ports now this is let's say port one and maybe this port is port two okay so this that must be simple so compared to hub it has a little intelligence we can say now this hub this this bridge is is simple okay so um it was better to describe this breeze fast and then talk about the swiss but it's okay i mean you understood this one this breeze internally is, is is like that so the breeze maintains some sort of you know mac addresses so let's say he somehow knows or there is a mechanism to know that let's say this port one so with this port one what are the computers you know let's say the computers or maybe the you know you know the terminal nodes that we like to have the internet connections or maybe the you know participate not internet they participate in the LAN so they basically you know are in this in this in, in this connected to the port one and each one has you know MAC address as you know that each one has a MAC address right so and MAC address is basically the physical address of each devices that's you know unique so this breeze somehow know that which MAC address is basically connected to the port one and this breeze also knows that which you know MAC addresses are connected to the port two okay now when you know let's say this computer you know wants to you know send information to this computer now when this data comes into the breeze he knows he checks the you know address and he knows that okay so it seems that this mac address that you want to send the information is on port 2 and at the time these you know data will be then you know forwarded to this um, you know you know port to segment okay and if uh, if the breeze finds that uh, actually you know the mac and maybe maybe this computers a basically want to you know uh, you know send information to the, this one okay one maybe this is a printer or something and at the time it sees that okay this a and this one is both is basically connected to the port one so that means i don't need to you know transmit this information to port 2 because this is the same segment so they automatically get this information okay so so this is you know how so the ultimate purpose of you know purpose of this you know breeze is basically that we have a let's say larger networks so we will create some segment this is segment 1 and this is this is segment you know 2 so in this way we can minimize the traffic uh, onto the you know you know these harbor networks and uh, it, it gives some sort of you know less collision right okay so uh, as you can see the breeze is again uh, it is we can say this is also layer to devices okay because why layer to devices because it can uh, basically works based on the mac address okay based on the mac address and it, as you know the mac address is basically the medium access control happening in the layer 2 okay now the next device is, is router now let's say you know we have you know one uh, you know network over here so this is connected to some switch maybe this switch is connected to the server so ultimately this all of this computer you know in this you know here they are basically getting uh, the services from the server right and let's say there is another networks of these networks and they are connected through a, connected to server through this switch and they are served by the server right but uh, if you let's say you know this network we can say this network is basically let's say maybe maybe network type a and maybe this networks maybe a network type b now what is network type a and what is network type b you know we will talk a little later but right now let's say they are different networks and this different networks we can understand you know by their ip address you know if you are just curious but whatever it is let's say there are two different networks you know because of their different ip addresses now this you know then how to you know connect you know between this device and these devices at this network and that network at that's work basically you know done by this router the router will be placed in the middle and this router will see you know and and interestingly the this router basically it acts as a switch you know and that uh, you know works on the ip address level so how it understand this so for example let's say you know this you know computer over here he likes to come you know communicate with the computer over here right and definitely you know this you know 
and and all all of these computers will be identified the IP address. We'll be talking on 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 that little later, right? Now let's say this you know this data you know comes here in the router, and the router it sees that okay you know this computer basically want to you know send you know information to a particular IP address, and he knows the IP address basically you know uh, resides in this network, okay? Not in this network because you know the IP address is in this network so at the time he will forward this you know data and you know the router basically works with the packet level okay so at this is basically a network layer devices so router we say this is a layer 3 or network layer 3 devices so and if he says that if, if you see that you know for example you know it, it might be happen like that this this computer you know like to you know uh, uh, transmit information to this one and at the time it is the same network and then IP address understand the IP address the router understand the IP address reside within the network itself so it doesn't need to forward the you know IP address okay so this is you know how it works so this is a router and router basically a network layer devices and then there is you know another in devices we say gateway a gateway is also you know it's it's kind of a um, you know switch or let's say a, a, a router and router also can act as a gateway but the main you know purpose of gateway is then let's say you know I, I I have a you know networks here a network here but they are they are running on different protocols so at the times this gateway need to convert that protocol so this protocol conversion is happening through the gateway so uh, so that's why you know router itself can act as a gateway if it has the right software you know embedded into the router so for example you know let's say PSTN that is in you know, a public Swiss telephone network so that means the telephone network that we use and maybe the VOIP so VOIP is voice over you know IP so that means we are we are we are talking over the telephone and let's say we we like to you know uh, send our this you know voice data over the internet you know uh, networks so that is called voice over IP so in through the IP network so at that time some sort of conversion we, we require so for example you know we, we need you know some conversion from this PSTN to VOIP protocol and again when it get back then VOIP to you know PSTN protocol so that's done by some specific gateway so that's the you know purpose of you know gateway so I hope that um, it will be helpful Okay, so I, I hope that it's, uh, you know, helpful for you. Okay, so uh, this is a, a rough, you know, sketch, you know, a, a simple a diagram to see that how basically a, a whole configuration works. So you see, you know, you know, this one, you know, we can, we can, we can think of that this is a one large networks, but it is segmented by the bridge and maybe you know let's say you know this is one computer this is one computer they are basically connected through this hub and then this hub is basically connected to a switch and maybe this switch is connected to a server or maybe this switch is connected to a router and it, this is an in you know, another end okay so now you know uh, we understand the network devices and and how it works but now let's say how you know something like you know called you know domain name systems how domain name system works so think about like that is very simple um, the computers you know when they like to communicate with these others all they basically know some numbers right and and then they know that all the numbers is basically the IP address right this computer over here or this mobile terminal is over here this network device is over here they basically you know have some you know computer just in you know, IP address and how you know when they are it is basically a, when a communication perspectives from connectivity perspectives right so this is all about numbers but human they don't understand numbers they basically you know some tom john mike that kind of things now when humans are you know interact we when we interact with these computer networks definitely you know we we need to some sort of you know conversion so if we if we if we can you know see how about this one for examples you know the originally if I like to, you know, let's say we, we like to connect with uh, Google.com, right? Maybe we like to have take some service from the Google server. So we understand that is basically, you know, Google.com, right? But actually, you know, 
what we need is or when we when we type the google.com so we are basically first things we need to identify the, is ip address okay the ip address that you know uh, that is hold or that is you know basically you know uh, the ip address given to the google server name the google server okay the ip address of the google server so so maybe the 142 2550 and 20736 this is basically the ip address so if you basically the type on the internet browser like http is you know like this one 142 250 36 basically you know you will be you know you know you, you will be you know getting you know this website so that means if you directly give the ip address at the time you know it doesn't need to you know map you know between the name and this one so whatever you know maybe if you use the windows operating systems and then if you can you know open the command prompt and then you just you know type like you know pink www.google.com and basically you will get some ip address that currently google servers is using for example this is the ip address for google server when i was using this one so anyway so uh, this is the you know thing that uh, the very first things we need to resolve that let's say you know very fast you know let's say this is you know we are we are using from our computer and we like to you know visit you know some website right for example google.com so you know when we type in in our browser the google.com basically it goes you know we, we first check that this ip address that you know map, mapping to the this ip address to this you know uh, name because we need this ip address the very first things this ip address so but we are providing this name this is basically domain name so we need some mapping from domain name to this ip address this is called domain name system okay so very first things that we are you know checking the within our operating system itself or in our cache because we have some you know browsing history so if we don't have then we will you know go to the you know some uh, the the local server local server means dns resolver we can we sometimes say you know resolver server so resolver server is basically our you know isp the internet the our internet service provider so that's called the local dns server now if it doesn't contain you know this mapping you know if it doesn't con it doesn't know that what is the ip address for this you know domain name and at the time it contacts the root server now root server you know very interestingly the root server there are 13 root server that is strategically placed around the globe okay this root server basically gives some information that okay uh, you basically take this information you contact you know this you know you know this server so basically root domain the root server you know doesn't give the ip address rather he gives some information of some another server that another server is called you know tld server tld means top level domain server and so then with that you know top level domain server then you know this this isp basically contact with that top level domain server and then top level domain server basically gives some another informations that information is that where is exactly who is the authority of that you know domain name so that information is gives so that is called authoritative server okay so this authoritative server information you know when provided by this you know top top level domain server so then it this you know our you know local server or 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 you know resolver server you know then contact with that you know authoritative you know, dns server and this authoritative server ultimately give this ip address now once have that ip address now we, we get our you know, our web browser then we, we provide the request to the web server in the google web server and then google web server know okay this is my ip address so i have to get the response back so this is how this domain name system works okay so this is okay this is to understand now let's talk about you know uh, network layer okay so internet technologies protocols you know in network layer in most about the you know, most appropriately now the very fast things that we'll be discussing ip layer okay so ip that is you know internet protocol in net we are we are talking about the network layer and we will be talking on internet protocol if you if you if you if you you know forget the layer so please go back and check so in tcp ip we can think about like this way okay so this is maybe the physical layer we can think and this is the data link layer and this is the network layer and then we have the transport layer and then we have the application layer okay this is this is how it works how how the tcp ip model 
So in uh, an OSI model, we had seven layers. So basically, you know, in OSI, you know, we had called application layer and presentation layer and session layer. So this is basically, you know, combined together made the application layer in TCP IP and all others are basically the same. Okay. So uh, now we are, we, we already, you know, talked something on this physical DLL uh, something. So we are now talking about this network layer because, you know, this network layer, you know, if you, why we are talking about this internet technologies and protocols, basically the network layer, network layer plus transport layer, okay, transport layer. So these two layer, network layer is the layer three and transport layer is the layer four if we think from the bottom. So uh, this basically constitute the, you know, in internet, you know, main technologies. So that's why now we will be talking something on network layer. Now network layer, you know, task is basically, you know, two basic services it provides, you know, and one service is, is basically the packet addressing and another is packet forwarding. And as you saw that the router forwards, the router basically is the network layer devices. So it forward the packet, right? So if it is, you know, within the networks, so that means simple point to point, you know, data transmissions that's supported by LAN and the IP address is, you know, within uh, this network. So that means there is no need to, you know, forward the packets, rather it basically, you know, it's a broadcast nature that's coming within the, you know, LAN. But then, you know, when, you know, we need to transmit the information uh, to a different LAN or maybe one, so one means wide area networks. So at the times we are employing the routers and router basically receives our packet and then forward to the destination addresses, right? So this is the work of the router. So routers just know, you know, that I will have to forward the address because I see the IP addresses coming from a different network. So that's the things. Now, there are two common, you know, ways that how we can, you know, move or let's say forward the packets, you know, through the, you know, you know, networks of links, so, and routers. So ultimately, you know, so router basically providing the network of networks. So we are saying the networks of links or something. So anyway, so there are two common ways. One is we say circuit switching, you know, and another is packet switching approach. Now in circuit switching approach, this is very much example is like, you know, as I say, the PSTN, that is public switched telephone network, okay? And in public switched telephone networks, what it happens, let's say a guy over here, he wants to contact, you know, like this one, okay? Now, definitely, you know, the path is not simple. On the, on the way, there will be maybe many, maybe, maybe many exchanges or many nodes or something, something, okay? So maybe, you know, this is, there is one node, there's another node, there's another node, maybe there's another node, there's another node, or we can say these are basically the, let's say, router or something, whatever it is. Now, uh, so, or maybe this is another, and then this is another. So we can think of that, okay, so it is possible that, I'm going from here to here, and then here to here, and then here to here, and then here to here. Or maybe it is also possible that I'll be going, you know, from here to here, and then from here to here, and then from here to here. So the circuit switching telephone, the circuit switching, what is it does before it sending the data, it basically establish the connection from source to the destination. So whatever the, the path is, maybe through some you know, a very dedicated path. So there is some mechanism to do so, but let's say this path is, you know, that one. So this connection is dedicated and established. And once the connection is established, then all of the messages will be, you know, going, all of the data will be going through this, the same path. And this connections was become active and established, you know, throughout the conversation, conversations or let's say data communication goes on. And after, you know, the data communications, you know, finishes, then this path, you know, you know, just, you know, vanishes. So that means before the connection starts, a dedicated path is established from source to destination through different nodes. So that's the idea of circuit switch networks. And one good example is PST and there is public switch telephone networks. And another, you know, approach is, you know, the, you know, packet switching. This is packet switching that is exactly, you know, we are familiar with, you know, that, that happens in the, in, in, in our internet. So in your internet, basically we have, you know, you know, router, 
this is one router we have another router maybe another router right so maybe i don't know maybe maybe let's say this is one router okay i'm saying this is another router this is another router this is this is another router there are lots of router in fact okay there are lots of router and you know my computer is over here and there is another computer over here so uh, then you know we 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 like to connect you know this computer with this computer right now this computer may be one ip address and this these computers over here, this may be, you know, another, you know, IP address in different networks, and this is different network, right? So then, you know, so this, this computer, the in network in layer will, you know, fragment the data in the packet level, as, as you know. So each packet now will be for, you know, going that, you know, maybe, maybe to this one, and to this one, and to this one, and to this one, and then eventually it reaches to this one. So it depends on that where this IP address is. So this, you know, packet switching, there are basically two approaches. One is datagram approaches and another is virtual circuit approaches. So datagram approaches is that each packet is treated independently. Maybe, you know, maybe, maybe, you know, we are saying, let's say we have, you know, so that means from, from, from this, you know, source to this destination, and maybe there are some intermediate router, you know, so that we're saying this router, right? So that means when I'm when I'm fragmenting a packet, maybe let's say this is one packet one, and maybe packet two, maybe packet three, packet five, sorry, packet four, like this way, right? Now this packet will be maybe going through this router, and then this router, and then to this one. And how about the second packet? Maybe it will be going to this router, and then to this router, and then this router. So that means they are independent. And sometimes it is possible that they become out of order. So in the destinations, or maybe at some point, you know, it will be reordered and then it will be taken. So this is called, you know, datagram approach. So at the time we say this is basically the datagram. So each packet is basically treated as an independent one. So uh, in another word, no specific route is predetermined prior to the transmissions, like what we saw in circuit switched network, right? In circuit to switching approach. So this is datagram approach. But there is another approach called virtual circuit. So maybe it is not, you know, you know, virtual, you know, it, it is it is basically the even though it is a packet switching network, but within the packet switch networks, we can establish some, you know, circuit switching concept here. So that's why we say virtual circuit. So that means the route is predetermined through the request and accept by all nodes along the route. So what I'm saying is, so let's say, you know, this is router, you know, this is router and this is router and this is another router this is another router maybe this is another router and this is i'm saying the destination and this is i'm saying the source right so before the connection establishments you know there is an agreement okay you know first i'll be sending to this router and this router and then this router and then this router and then this one okay so you see even though it's packet by pack packet and the connection is basically is not you know established prior to the transmissions but at least you know we have a consensus that we will follow these kinds of you know route okay it's still the packet are independent but you know it will be going by packet by packet and 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 these you know resources or this link is not dedicated so dedicated mean you know this link is not you know so in between for examples when let's say packet one you know packet one is transmitted you know and then go along this route okay so packet one goes along this route that's okay now let's say packet two now before packet two it might happen maybe you know this link is basically sharing by other you know maybe other you know communications it is possible and maybe this you know this is using this router and this one this is possible you know and it, its own packet is, is being transmitted and then maybe it's you know packet two information is going but whatever you know whenever you know it can use but all the packets will follow the same route so that's why you say this is a virtual circuit okay so anyway so this is you know how you know two different approaches works and now we'll be talking something on you know as you saw that we have you know primarily two basic services that you know provided by this network layer one is packet forwarding that we explain and then another one is packet addressing so the packet addressing is basically is IP address that how we you know provide the IP address to each you know of the devices 
how basically that that's done that uh, we know that this ip address is basically unique to each of of the devices or maybe the each of the connections and then um, you know we, we can uh, correctly you know go to that address our data can rightly you know go there right now when we talk about this you know addressing you know it is it is it is good to mention let's say we are talking about the addressing now addressing has you know two kind of address one is physical address and another is logical address okay physical address and logical address physical address as you saw that i told you that it is basically the mac address the mac address means you know that is you know network and, and component or each devices has its own mac address so that is you know you know that mac address is used to constitute you know the local area networks right so so that is that is the you know physical address and what is the logical address logical address is basically the ip address now you know don't be confused with these things and i will give you an example that what we mean by you know logical address and physical address I think about uh, like that you know let's say you know we, we like to you know uh, you know transmit the information you know let's say to usa okay from seoul from this city or from any other city maybe usa and within the usa maybe let's say in new york city and maybe you know maybe to jackson height and and maybe 95 street and maybe number maybe 12 okay I, I don't know what is this address i'm just you know making an address the usa new york city jackson high districts and 95 street and it's number 12 okay number 12 is house now that's fine so so this is basically your logical address so uh, when you when you go let's say there is a person over there and you you like to go and you you say that okay go you know follow this address so even he follows this address but in at this resident address you know you still don't know that who who is this guy right then you need that what is the what is the name of his let's say what is the name of this guy and i'm saying this name of this guy is mr david okay then i understand oh okay well that i now understand so we can say that this address is basically the logical address and this at the name itself that who is the exact he is this is our you know the physical address so this physical address is basically the mac address the devices and this logical address is basically the ip address so that's why we are saying as long as the connectivity is concerned then this is the logical address so in logical address will help us to go at that places and then when you go to that places then we'll find out the exact devices by this mac address so mac address basically is the local and that's the actual physical address okay so now it comes that okay how we you know you know assign the ip address the ip address assignment is very easy i mean um yeah, it's, it's very easy so how we do that so it basically you know the tcp if we, if we are following the tcp ip model so in tcp ip model there are three classes of networks one is class a another is class b and another is class c okay this three class of networks now and and if you if you if you have you know some idea that how we write the ip address ip address in let's say we are talking about ipv4 now this ipv4 basically has you know four different you know segment okay this is this is you know segment one this is basically one byte of information and this is you know another byte of information this is the second byte so we can say this is one one byte this is also one byte and this is also one byte and this is also one byte and one byte means that is you know bit 0 to you know 7 and then bit bit 8 to bit 15 and then from bit 16 to bit uh, i don't know uh, 23 and then bit 24 to bit 31 now if you just you know represent in binary as you know that the maximum number would be you know 0 to 255 here so this is also 0 to 255 and this is also 0 to 255 and this is also 0 to 255 so this is you know how it is right and ultimately you know we don't write in binary rather we you know present the ip address in a you know some decimal format in a force four dotted so this is one byte this is second byte this is third byte this is four byte or we say octet so anyway so this is how we write the ip address okay so uh, then you know let's say class a ip address is you know you know class a ip address basically we reserve you know first byte for the network address and the other byte is we just you know reserve for you know host that means 
I'm saying that it is a class A network and how many hosts if we if we need many devices then we need class A network right and if we need you know moderate number of devices then class B networks and if we need you know very few number of devices to connect then you know we can have class C network so that means class A B C basically the size of the network okay so I'm, I'm yeah, that how many devices you we like to connect so class A network the very first byte is reserved for the network and all other you know is basically your you know IP address assigned for the you know simply computer or mobile devices so we say this is basically host part and this is the network part so and more appropriately you know for class A network the first byte number always starts with you know you know something like between 0 and 127 and for the class B network you know we reserve you know two byte for the network part and two byte for the host part okay and the first byte of this two byte you know always starts with something like you know a, a number between 128 to 191 this is class b address and this byte you can give any numbers whatever it is and the class c this is a class c address class c address you know we reserve three byte for the network to identify the network id or network part and the only one byte we give for the address part so i mean host part so definitely as you see we, we only have very limited number of you know devices that we can connect if our network is class c network and the first byte of you know this uh, class c network is somewhere 192 to 223 so this is very important to mention that means just by looking the very first number we can say that which network it is okay so that's the idea for example this is 75 and one of the 75 is basically in between 0 to 127 so we are saying this is a class a network and within the class a network what is the you know address of our host so this is the address of our host 4104 something like that okay so this because this is this is indicate the which mobile device or which you know computer it is and this is indicating that you know i have the class a networks and my network id is 75 something okay so this is how it is and you see this is a class a b network ip address why because you know the class b network ip address the first byte always starts with you know some number between 128 to 198 because this number is basically 129 so this is a class b address similarly you know this is a class c address this is an example of the things right so as you saw that the the first byte of the ip address you know always that is assigned by this you know inter nic that is world internet authority and then remaining three bytes you know we have a range from 0 to 255 okay so first byte just you know like this one and for the b is this one for the net you know c network is this one the other you know bytes for example you know this one 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 you know we have number from 0 to 255 now the zero we always zero and 255 we basically reserve for some special purposes so all what we can do is basically we can assign any number between one to 254 so as an example for example let's say you know you know we, we just take this example over here so this is basically a as we know this is a ip address for a class b network so this is you know ip address of class b network now what is the network id network id is we know the class b network basically first two byte basically the network part so we say you know network id is 129 144 and 00 right whatever host it is so we, we we are not carrying that one because we are you know identifying what is the network id so network id is then you just put 00 so that means this is basically our network part and the host part we are making 00 so this is becoming our network id okay and what is the broadcast id now as you, as you remember that i told you you know the bro broadcast id may be used in a network for broadcasting purposes when when a device is maybe router or or breeze you know or swiss need to broadcast something so we we need that id so when we we provide the ip address something so everybody understand this is a broadcast id so broadcast id is you know again this is a class b this is the network address and if we keep 255 and 255 so so this means the broadcast id 
okay now now see as i told you that you know this 00 and 255 is reserved from some special purpose so this is you know the the, the special purpose is you know broadcasting and network id creation now uh, so what is the usable ip uh, for this you know class b you know address usable ip you see that you know we use two bytes you know right we use you know two bytes means 16 bits so total number is is possible is for you know usable ip for a for a computer let's say we are creating a network class b network we are creating a class b network so definitely first of all from the first two bytes we assign for the network id and then we have remaining two bytes for our assigning our ip address now how many numbers you can generate 2 to the power 16 number we can generate but one for the network id and another for the broadcast id so you just subtract two so ultimately you can assign 65,534 devices you can assign the ip in class b address similarly you can calculate for the class c and class a accordingly now with this you know we, we, we just you know talk some overview on um, the network layer now we go for the transport layer and as i told you the network layer and the transport layer together is basically the heart of the you know uh, internet or let's say you know networks of networks those things now in transport layer we basically use two protocols one is tcp protocol that is called transmission control protocol and another we call udp that is user datagram protocol so these two protocols that we used for end-to-end -end communications okay so end-to-end -end communication so so you see the tcp basically is a connection oriented you know approach or connection oriented protocol so that means before we start communications so we need to establish the connections through a three-way handshaking process okay so i will explain this three-way handshaking process but before that i need to tell you see the tcp alone cannot deliver our information tcp need help you know from the ip layer to deliver our data right as you know that this ip layer basically you know forward and uh, forwarded the data from one router to another one router to another one router to another but let's say that forwarded part have been done then we need definitely from the one computer to another computer they need to understand ip 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 layer the, he doesn't care that what's happening between this guy and this guy right so ip layer what this does is all just intermediate you know this forwarding stops is done right now when the packet is actually coming here that it will receive the packet or you know it will you know not receive the packet or it will send the packet or not so this is basically the part of the end-to-end -end in communications so that's why tcp layer does that but tcp layer basically relies on the ip layer for forwarding the packet okay so so how it works then it basically very simple you see maybe let's say this you know computer he wants to you know uh, he want to establish a connection he want to communicate with this computer and for our example let's say we because he initiate and he like to have some service from this computer let's say we talk about this is a client and this is a server but you know don't worry about it the client server things this is basically a computer wants to you know transmit information or want to communicate with these servers uh, with this computer so that's it so i'm just i'm saying this is a client and this is a server for you know differentiation and for exemplify so first of all it basically sends a some you know synchronization you know data synchronization message or say or let's say synchronization signal even we can say that okay that that hey i like to start communications and possibly you know and then you know i like to start communications but you know as you know the tcp basically all works with the segment right in segment by segment and possibly the sequence number that this is exactly sequence and a segment sequence number maybe that you know i'm expecting that i will send the sequence number m okay and upon receiving this you know sync signal or or let's say synchronization number you know signal it received that one right in the server and then it basically send you know two signal together one is called scene and another is called act this is basically the scene and this is called acknowledgement now this scene is basically let's say 
uh, you know it will provide it will prov you know let let this client know that he wants to start the communications or it doesn't want to so that's basically done by this you know sync again so similar to that what he sent these are right so so this server now sent this sync signal and providing the flag that yes i want to start or i don't want to start so let's say he also want to start the communications and he said okay i want to start the communication and i'm expecting that sequence number n okay now think about he basically told that that i am expecting you know he basically told that okay you know i i like to start the communications and probably i'll be sending sequence m now he's received that one he's saying that okay you know i also like to you know uh, start the communication but i'm expecting to receive sequence n from you okay so so there is a reason why i'm saying that you know maybe he so it is possible that some you know sequence will be dropped you know and will not reach so that's why this server need to know that you know i'm i'm expecting this particular you know sequence then client understand that okay maybe he needs this sequence but i'm talking this sequence, maybe other sequence has been dropped so that's why you know this looks different but don't be confused with and he also sent the acknowledgement the acknowledgement is that you know which sequence he already received right so the acknowledgement basically if you already received you know some something like you know m sequence before then he will, he will send m plus one just increasing the counter one just to differentiate between that now after receiving this acknowledgement from the server then this client send the final acknowledgement and once they send the final acknowledgement then they are ready for communication so this is how this tcp layer you know this tcp protocol that is transmission control protocol works and then there is another protocol is called udp the udp is user this is called user datagram datagram protocol user datagram protocol is basically connection lens connection less and there is no guarantee on delivery so how it works it basically very simple let's say you know some receiver you know this receiver basically you know somehow send a request to this sender that hey i need the data and then as soon as he got the request he will keep sending the you know data and, and you know response you know as long as as as, as needed okay he will not wait for the, any kinds of acknowledgement and it seems that very very stupidity but it is very useful in many cases especially for time sensitive communications where you know dropping packet is okay you know better than waiting i don't have time for waiting but because of this same you know very natures the useful nature this is also you know problematic maybe in the security issues so this is you know how you know what, what we how it works you know in udp and and this tcp so so tcp is basically the guaranteed and because connection oriented service and this is done through handshaking and udp is basically connection less service so uh, then you know uh, uh, we will be talking something all then what is the quality of service for multimedia communications we understand we reviewed you know our you know communications and networks parts for multi i mean for general you know networks and communications part now so those you know characteristics communication characteristics are same for multimedia communications also however the challenges in multimedia communications is that you know it has very different characteristics especially especially when we think about its audio and video video data right for example the look at the volume of the data volume of the data is huge right the audio video and uh, so they also need very high data rate definitely and and they often you know this very continuous that we, we don't want to you know wait you know for the playback we want to have you know continuous manner so that's a very you know distinct characteristics and the data should be real times very often and also it is interactive in many applications for example video conferencing then you know the rate you know also multimedia data characteristics sometimes the rate is fluctuating very drastically and sometimes very busty and very some suddenly very large volumes comes in and then again very less data comes in this is a basically a general and trend and characteristics of you know let's say mpeg4 video data and it says that i know regarding as the times goes on you see the data peak rate how how this you know data rate you know varies right so handling these kinds of you know uh, the non homogeneous you know bit rate is basically challenging for communications networks okay so what are the you know uh, uh, so when we think about the multimedia communications definitely we need to you know we need to 
understand the quality of service, right? So what are the quality of, actually we are, we are now talking about the quality of service for multimedia communications. So we need to set some parameters based on which we'll, we can you know, compare or we can perceive the quality of service. The very first parameter is basically the bandwidth. Now, as you see, the bandwidth is basically the is measure of transmission speed over our, over our digital link or networks. And depending on the media, maybe twisted pair, depending on the fiber, depending on the wireless, you know, our, you know, you know, transmission media, and maybe there are some other issue also, maybe interference. So then based on many other things, you know, maybe our, you know, transmission speed varies. And generally, we basically count this, you know, speed is kbps or mbps. Now, second is basically the latency. The latency is basically we are saying the delay, the delay you know, from the transmission to the reception, how much delay we have. And generally we measure delay in millisecond. Then we have packet loss and error. So it is basically what is the error rate, how many packets we are dropping. This is generally, you know, uh, we, we, we in terms of percentage, okay, maybe 10 percent, you know, packet drop or maybe 30 percent packet drops, that kind of things. This is called packet you know, loss error rate. Then we have delay jitter, delay jitter or simply jitter. So jitter is, you know, think about like this one that let's say this is across the time and this is, you know, this one is basically in the frame that we are playing, okay, the frame that we are playing and this is basically, you know, the delay we have. You see, this is frame we are playing, the delay we have, the frame we are playing, delay we have. So as you see, the delay is basically not homogeneous, but think about this one. This is basically uniform delay and uniform playback, more or less, right? So this is better in terms of jitter. So jitter basically that, you know, a measure of smoothness, you know, as we as we see, you know, if we, in terms of time, as we play the audio video, so how smooth these are. So this is basically the jittering or delay, okay? Now we have, you know, another parameters that's called, you know, sync skew. Now sync skew is basically that different, the synchronizations, you know, how, how much, how good the synchronization is between different kinds of multimedia data. For example, in audio video, if there is a you know, lag between audio and video, for example, you know, if it is good you know, between 80 millisecond lag between audio and video, then it is not good, okay? So that kind of parameters we need to adjust. You know, maybe, maybe for, you know, voice and audio, voice and, and video, maybe these skew parameters may be 120 millisecond, okay? So this is maybe tolerable, but for, you know, audio, simple audio and video is maybe 80 millisecond. So this is, you know, some parameters that what we need to consider. Then finally, you know, we'll be talking something on that, you know, multimedia data, basically a broad spectrum, broad spectrum in a sense that, you know, it basically from audio to image and then image to video. So definitely some are low quality, some are medium quality, some are high quality. And also the applications is also very diverse kind of applications. Some applications are one-way applications, some are two-way applications, some are interactive and some are non-interactive. Some applications are real-time, some are non-real-time applications. So there are, you know, it's a broad spectrum of multimeter data. So, so for example, you know, uh, think about let's say two-way traffic, you know, maybe low latency and the jitter and possibly priority service, you know, for example, you know, via telephony and video telephony, we, this is basically two-way traffic and that we require low latency and very low jitters and possibly, you know, the prioritized delivery, right? So another, you know, kinds of applications which might be have, have, you know, some sort of, let's say, e-commerce applications. For e-commerce applications, this is basically two-way traffic that require very low loss, packet loss should be very low and very low latency and, and maybe it is also prior to service, right? And, and maybe, you know, when we are, you know, transferring some large file, for example, movie, maybe we don't need real-time requirements, for example, downloading or transferring, right? And, and there are certain cases, for example, you know, where we need moderate latency and jitter, but the ordering is very important. For example, a streaming service, right? For example, a streaming video, video, this is basically one-way traffic, right? Or maybe web surfing or online gaming, so add that kind of things, you know, we need strict ordering and, and moderate kind of, you know, latency and jitter, right? So that's the idea. So we understand the quality of service and we also understand uh, the you know, parameters and we also understand the, you know, multimedia services and class, right? Multimedia services and class. Now this is, you know, an example that, you know, what are the different kinds of requirements for different kinds of applications, you know, in terms of speed requirements. And when, when we come then in terms of, you know, latency and jitter in different kinds of digital audio, so you can see, you know, these kinds of table and then you can you know, use it when you need it.
So, okay, and uh, see you in the next week that we'll be starting with, you know, multimedia protocols, multimedia communication protocols.